Hello and welcome to this lecture series on chemical process modeling and simulation. For the past few lectures, we have been discussing how to model energy of systems. And in this uh, aspect, we have been uh, discussing fundamentals of thermodynamics. After an introductory lecture on thermodynamics and a lecture deriving the various criteria for thermodynamic equilibrium, we spent one lecture on entropy and following which we have been discussing the various intensive properties such as temperature and pressure. This lecture is a continuation on the three part lecture series on intensive properties and in this lecture we will be discussing chemical potential. So uh, most of uh, these lectures are based on um, the excellent book Molecular Driving Forces by Dill and Bromberg and uh, there is also uh, extensive references uh, especially in this lecture uh, to the excellent book by Herbert Callan on thermodynamics and introduction to thermostatistics. This chemical potential, chemical potential is the driving force for mixing so as to maximize entropy. We saw that temperature is the driving force for energy exchange in the form of thermal energy, of course, heat exchange, right? so as to maximize entropy. We saw that pressure was the driving force for expansion, so as to maximize entropy. In the same vein, chemical potential can be seen as the driving force for mixing, so as to maximize entropy. So as with the previous two lectures on temperature and pressure, we start with the entropy formulation. As per the entropy formulation, what does it state? The macroscopic state of a thermodynamic system is defined by its entropy. And so now how many ever independent variables are needed as per the state postulate to define the macroscopic state of the thermodynamic system? Entropy is considered to be a function of those independent variables. And for the kind of systems that we are considering in this course, we look at three independent variables. One is the internal energy which corresponds to heat interactions and these two are the two work modes, one corresponding to moving boundary and another corresponding to permeable, impermeable boundary. And this is just the work mode that we are interested in in this particular lecture. So given S is a function of UVN, then the total differential of entropy is can arise from either du or dv or dn as we have seen. And then we define the partial derivatives thus and they are the intensive properties because both S and N are extensive. So the, the partial derivative is intensive, right? And so we can write dS is du over t plus p over t dv minus mu over t dn. And in this lecture, we are going to be focusing on this particular work mode and what does chemical potential mean. So just as we defined um, temperature to be the driving force for thermal energy exchange or heat exchange between systems so as to maximize entropy. Pressure as the driving force for expanding the system volume so as to maximize the entropy thereby causing an energy exchange. Chemical potential is a measure of the driving force for diffusion and consequently mixing of species in a system thereby facilitating energy exchange either between a system and surroundings or between subsystems so as to maximize the entropy of the system. So the same approach we take as we took for temperature and pressure. You know, continuing along the same arguments, we, this is a mode of work. Right? When, when you say what is work, work is typically described as energy in transit due to some force that is acting on a distance and that work done is said to be on the system is said to be stored as potential energy of the system. So for a conservative system you have dW is f dx, w is integral f dx and f is simply the 
derivative of w with respect to x larger the force greater the amount of work done so viewed in this similar manner now what you see is entropy is also just as it was the potential to uh, to pass energy displace energy from the system it is it was the potential to displace the boundary of the system so as to expand it is also the potential entropy is the potential all right the potential to diffuse selective species all right the conservative system the the work done is is a potential a scalar potential isn't it that's why you can give these definitions so entropy is now seen as the potential to diffuse to cause diffusion of selective species thereby promoting mixing and minus mu by t is the sort of driving force associated with it and then so you are displacing instead of the energy you are displacing specific species all right that's what you are doing and therefore there is a change in the number of moles so higher the chemical potential of a species greater the tendency of that species to get displaced and that means diffuse and mix in the system say through a some form some form of a, some sort of a semi permeable boundary so entropy measures this tendency of mixing of the species in the system to increase so this is the idea so similar arguments along the lines of what we saw for temperature as well as pressure so we want to understand chemical potential so uh, we again just as in the case with pressure we consider simple lattice models so here we consider a lattice gas comprising four white balls and four black balls so as to sort of look at two different species so to speak in eight lattice sites so this is a simple one dimensional picture right so um i'll show the picture here right so this is this is your simple uh, system with eight lattice sites and so the total volume eight lattice sites is fixed all right so the four sides on the left uh, four sides on the left and the four sides on the right are separated by a permeable wall or a membrane all right this is the barrier that we see the degree of freedom now what are we changing we are changing the numbers of white and black balls on either side of the membrane we are not changing the volume with pressure we change the volume here we are changing the number of white balls versus number of black balls on either side of the membrane so this allows for the white and black balls to so to speak diffuse across this membrane okay this is the sort of thought experiment that we are constructing so the left and right sides can be viewed as two subsystems the micro state of each subsystem corresponds to the arrangement of the balls in it so to give an example for this picture depicted for case a the micro state is black white black white for the half subsystem and the other half subsystem it is white white black black right so for the second case it is black black white black and then white 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 black the third case it is black 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 on the left side of the subsystem the right side subsystem it is all white 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 so as i said the micro state a is bw bw on the left hand side and ww bb on the right hand side and so on so forth so this is how we can define the micro states corresponding to various arrangements that are possible where the degree of freedom is the numbers of white balls and black balls on either side of the membrane so we considered the lattice simple lattice model um, of eight lattice sites separated by a permeable barrier so that the system has two subsystems the subsystem left and subsystem right <laughs> and there are eight balls that are placed in the eight lattice sites so all lattice sites are occupied right and the balls are either black in color or white in color 
and for various arrangements that are possible with a total of four black balls and four white balls okay and they are fixed the total number of black balls and total number of white balls are fixed so you can come up with very many arrangements you will see how many shortly so the micro states corresponding to this uh, um, arrangement was all discussed in the previous slide so you since you have two subsystems you assign a pair of numbers or a pair of microstates so in uh, in the microstates this would correspond to b w b w for the left subsystem w w b b for the right subsystem similarly we considered what what the microstates for the various arrangements are now what is the corresponding macro states we take the corresponding macro states to be the number of black balls in each subsystem of course you can also take the uh, macro states to be the number of white balls in each subsystem and in either case the multiplicity that we are going to evaluate is going to be the same so in other words if you look at the uh, the macro states being the number of black balls in each subsystem so since the system itself has two subsystems so you have to assign two numbers for each macro state of the total system so a pair of numbers like this right in the first case you have two black balls on the left and two on the right and therefore the macro state is 2 comma 2 and uh, here 3 on the left one on the right so that the macro state is 3 comma 1 and in this case 4 on the left and 0 on the right so the macro states are 4 comma 0 what is the multiplicity for each macro states in other words the question i am asking is how many ways can you distribute two black balls in four sides and see here itself in the in the micro state corresponding to a itself you are shown two different ways in which you can distribute two black balls in four sides so there are many ways in which that can be done how do you calculate this multiplicity this is calculated by this particular formula right the combination formula so for the case a for the macro state a if you look at the total multiplicity the total multiplicity is the product of the multiplicity of the left subsystem and the right subsystem and this of course should be the case because these two arrangements are independent of each other right and then you go 4 factorial by 2 factorial into 2 factorial so total 4 states 2 black balls and the remaining 2 4 minus 2 being white balls and so if the product of this is 36 there are 36 such arrangements that are possible where you have 2 black balls and 2 white balls on each of the left and right subsystems for a 3 1 arrangement there are a total of 16 different arrangements that are possible right and of course for the 4 0 arrangement there is only one way in, in which you can do this you have to put all the black balls on the left subsystem and no black ball will therefore be present on the right subsystem or in the right subsystem okay so if you add all of these the total number of micro states is 53 and the probability of each micro state is 1 over 53 each micro state is equally likely however you observe that the probability of the macro states are substantially different and you see that the probability of the macro state is maximum for that macro state where you have basically equal number of or rather maximum um, mixing of the black and the white balls that is what we are seeing the degree of freedom in this particular example is the extent of particle exchange multiplicity is greatest when the particles are distributed most uniformly and therefore we see that the implication is that species tend to diffuse and mix so as to maximize multiplicity so this is uh, another simple model a lattice model that has been used to illustrate understand what is chemical potential now we have seen this sort of physical mix what happens in reacting systems for chemical changes in other words there is not merely a physical state that is changed but the chemical state also is changed due to reactions 
the driving force yet again is chemical potential only. So we will see what chemical potential is in the reacting systems. In the example considered above, there are no chemical reactions. Species merely diffuse between subsystems so as to maximize entropy. This can be looked at as simplified, oversimplified models for multiple phases in separation processes such as distillation, absorption, extraction and so on and so forth. So the left side subsystem could be thought of as a liquid phase, the right side subsystem could be thought of as a vapor phase and then the two species are diffusing, uh, you know, um, counter diffusing, right? And, uh, you know, there could be only selective diffusion of one of the species across the permeable um, boundary that would be a situation of absorption. Right. In all these cases, now you see that uh, the, the diffusion happens so as to maximize entropy. Consider the distillation of a binary mixture of acetone and water. The counter diffusion that takes place causes preferential diffusion of acetone to the vapor phase and water into the liquid phase across the permeable interface. That is basically, if you look at, uh, you know, a bubble, bubble cap rate our column, there is a gas bubble that is in contact with the liquid that is flowing above the bubble cap tray, right, in cross flow, right. So this gas bubble is rising through the, the column of liquid and therefore what is the interface, what is the uh, boundary, right. The boundary is the, the interface between the gas bubble and the liquid. Right. And so across that interface, permeable interface, uh, acetone is preferentially diffusing into the vapor phase and water is preferentially diffusing into the liquid phase. You know, without going into much details, it can be shown that this diffusion will result in maximizing the entropy of the overall system. And that is what is the driving force. The, uh, the chemical potential measures that driving force to maximize entropy. Right? That is what is Do S over Do N. Change in N, Dn, okay, of acetone and of water, right? So as to maximize that entropy, Ds, uh, the, the change in entropy is maximized. So what if there are, say, homogeneous chemical reactions, right? So if mixing, if this sort of physical mixing may be thought of as diffusion of molecules across phases, reactions may be thought of as quote unquote diffusion of intramolecular groups across molecules. So you go take for example the simplest uh, uh, double displacement reaction HCl plus NaOH giving NaCl plus H2O. Now you are looking at Cl diffusing from HCl to NaOH and the OH diffusing from NaOH to HCl so to speak. So you can think of this as diffusion of intramolecular groups instead of the whole molecule itself across molecules. So keeping this picture in mind, reacting system always has to have more than one species, at least one reactant and one product. So for the sim for simplicity, let us analyze this chemical potential in the reacting systems. Let the reaction vessel, which is the system, be adiabatic and rigid. This is usually not the case with uh, reactors, which are usually open vessels. Your titration experiment that you did, where you added uh, some either HCl or NaOH into the other uh, reaction mixture through a burette and then you collected this in a conical flask, right? The conical flask would be the reaction vessel, right? And that would not be adiabatic and it is definitely not a rigid boundary at the interface. These are usually open vessels that exchange energy and volume with the surroundings, which is the ambient atmosphere. However, to sort of keep the number of modes of energy exchange to be minimum so that we can focus on this this uh, this particular changes in numbers right so let us assume that the reaction vessel is adiabatic and rigid this means du is 0 dv is 0 then the change in entropy due to the chemical reactions is simply due to minus 
uh, mu i over t v n i sum over all the constituents or all the species that are present. So this is what is the cost for change in entropy. So this this particular part is uh, you know uh, taken from thermodynamics and introduction to thermostatistics by Herbert Callan. So consider any general reversible chemical reaction. There are C components and this nu is the uh, stoichiometric coefficient. A is either the react reactant or product species. So the stoichiometric coefficient will be negative for reactants and positive for products, right? So and this is a reversible chemical reaction, right? So let the number of moles of each species Ai be given by Ni and the corresponding chemical potential let it be denoted as mu i okay so let us take for a simple example um, 2h2 plus o2 giving 2h2o this is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen to form water now uh, we take three components that are present a1 is hydrogen a2 is oxygen and a3 is water so the stoichiometric coefficient is minus 2 for hydrogen minus 1 for oxygen and plus 2 for water right the total number of components c is equal to 3 at equilibrium what does maximum entropy imply maximum entropy implies that this ds is equal to 0 which means the sum over mu i over t d n i for the three components should be 0 so this should be mu 1 by t d n 1 plus mu 2 by t d n 2 plus mu 3 by 3 d n 3 uh, sorry mu 3 by t dn3 should be 0 t is of course thermal equilibrium implies that temperature would be constant and therefore mu 1 dn1 plus mu 2 dn2 plus mu 3 dn3 should be 0 this change in n is proportional obviously to the stoichiometric coefficients that is what determines how much uh, you know number of moles of hydrogen is going to react when one mole of oxygen reacts right for example this also determines the to change in the total number of moles due to a reaction so if dni is proportional to the stoichiometric coefficient then let us take the proportionality constant to be the effective change in the total number of moles which i say dn with a uh, tilde on top all right so this is basically that means what i am saying is dni is equal to my, uh, mu i uh, mu i times dn tilde so then the criteria for thermodynamic equilibrium keeping this uh, this expression it would be this dn tilde is the change in the total number of moles so that would be constant and then i just uh, take take that out minus dn by minus d n tilde by t then sum over all the uh, uh, species or constituents uh, mu i nu i is equal to 0 where this is the stoichiometric coefficient and this is the chemical potential for each species thus at equilibrium we get this particular criterion for um, you know chemical equilibrium in reacting systems so in other words if the equations of state of the system and the reaction mixture is known then you can then basically uh, the, determine the, uh, the, the equilibrium state all right so uh, what is going to be the final equilibrium state what will be the compositions and the number of moles of each species that will be present that can be determined by solving this one equation what do i mean by equation of state for a reaction mixture so for each mu it should be it would be a function of temperature and pressure and the compositions so that must be captured the, um, the there must be a model for this the reaction mixture itself model of a thermodynamic uh, model of a fluid at rest thermodynamic model which will have to be there right so with that model we can estimate what chemical potential of each species in the reaction mixture is going to be then add it all up and then by this constraint we can say then what will be the relative concentrations of all the species in the system 
at the equilibrium condition. Let us consider a little bit more uh, complex example uh, with a set of reactions. So one reaction is the first reaction we have seen so far, hydrogen and oxygen combining to form water. The second one is carbon dioxide and, uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen uh, combining reversibly to form carbon monoxide and water. And the third one where carbon monoxide and oxygen react to form carbon dioxide. Now at equilibrium then the condition sigma i from 1 to c of mu i into nu i is equal to 0 where nu is the stoichiometric coefficient of species i mu is equal to chemical potential of species i if I were to apply that condition criterion for equilibrium then we should get all of these things these should become equal all right this this should become equal at uh, uh, at equilibrium there are three equations but out of these only two are independent because if you take the, um, the if you take and add these two equations then you will basically get the, the first equation right there are however the constraints of the three atoms that are in the system in other words basically the total amount of hydrogen atoms in the system oxygen atoms in the system and carbon atoms in the system whichever combination they are fed into the reactor you could have a feed of hydrogen oxygen and carbon monoxide or you could have a feed of hydrogen oxygen carbon dioxide you could have a feed of carbon dioxide water oxygen you know you could come up with any possible combination of feed but whichever way you have fed the constituents the total number of atoms amount of atoms that comes from the feed specification that you cannot change right that number is always concerned so that gives basically the third equation along with two independent equations out of these three taken together all of these can be solved to determine basically the equilibrium state of a complex um, reaction uh, mixture with a set of reactions. So to summarize, chemical potential is the driving force for diffusion and consequently mixing of species in a system so as to maximize the system's entropy. Now in non-reacting systems, differential in differences in chemical potential drives species across spaces, for example across subsystems resulting in mixing that maximizes entropy. In reacting systems, however, difference in chemical potential drives intramolecular groups across molecules resulting in chemical reactions that maximize entropy. These intramolecular groups could either be atoms or ions, groups of atoms or ions such as functional groups in organic chemistry, it could be molecular ions in, uh, in inorganic chemistry and so on and so forth. So whichever way these intermolecular groups that sort of um, you know uh, these intermolecular groups move across diffuse or displace across molecules they result in chemical reactions so as to maximize the entropy of the overall system with this we come to the end of this lecture on chemical potential i hope you've been able to uh, get a, a good understanding of the three intensive properties temperature pressure chemical potential if you uh, have any questions as always i'll be uh, happy to clarify any doubts you may have you can either leave those questions in the comment section of the youtube channel or you can write to me um, one on one and directly so uh, with this we sort of come to the end of the three part lectures on intensive properties so, so far we have uh, discussed some fundamentals of thermodynamics, then derived the criteria for thermodynamic equilibrium, uh, looked at the criteria from two formulations, one where the macroscopic state of the thermodynamic system is defined by internal energy, that is the internal energy formulation, and two where the macroscopic state of the thermodynamic system is defined by entropy, and that is the entropy formulation. Then we try to understand what entropy is. Then we have tried to understand the three intensive properties 
temperature, pressure, chemical potential. With this, we come to the end of this set of lectures. In the next lecture, we will be discussing the different thermodynamic, other thermodynamic potentials other than internal energy and entropy. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day.